Good morning all. There is a requirement that I open some post because there's quite a lot of it unopened. So let's get on with it and let's call it post bag. Now throughout this video I invite you to enjoy the hedge trimmer cacophony courtesy of my neighbour who has a 10 foot hedge. Right let's get on with it. This one I believe has no electronic component to it at all. But of course it will get used in the course of my electronics play. So these are of course uh, numbered beads so that you can make little necklaces with your phone number on them. Why might you want to do that? Uh, yeah numbered beads Now I think they're all oh, six or seven millimeters diameter. My guess is that there are ten different types of these. So it looks like the uh, six and the nine are relatively interchangeable. The one is just horrid and ugly and really a bit oversized. Uh, zero, five, eight looks like it's uh, suitably weighted with a fat ring at the bottom and a thin ring at the top. Yeah, I'm quite liking these. And you can probably see from this one here that they do indeed have a hole running through them so that they can be threaded onto a string or in my case, a wire. So what are these for? Well, remember my 8-bit computer where I used an O, an I and a Z and I really wanted uh, numbers. Well, now I can have numbers and these will fit onto these nice uh, little thin blue solid core wires and then I can number the devices that sit on the uh, data bus here um, and which the computer reads from and writes to. So how do these compare with the um, lettered ones I bought some time ago? Well, curiously, the let oh, don't want to mix them up. The lettered ones, oh, they're a bit smaller. They're a little bit uh, over inked, and very strangely, they sort of inked the hole, whereas these don't have an inked hole. They have a clear hole. I think these are slightly bigger as well. Let's go to eBay. And so welcome to eBay, and here's the listing. And it is for 200 pieces, white round numbers, spacers, beads, seven millimeters, S one times two. Well, you might hear the uh, hedge trimmer symphony a little bit louder now because I'm using the uh, webcam microphone. I don't use the webcam as a webcam much anymore. I just use its microphone. Um, I think the phone is quite good at cancelling this sort of uh, external noise, but perhaps not so much this webcam. Um, yes, so $1.30 for those 200 pieces, free shipping, and these came from YouGum. Right, next up is this one, Diode Quantity 1, Diode Quantity 1. But I don't think it is diodes. No, it's, oh, surface mount components. Wasn't expecting them on strips like this. Interesting. Right, what do we have here? Well, we have 25V1A and we have 16V4.7A. Not sure about A, but microfarads I think would be a bit more relevant. Because these are um, tantalum capacitors. Um, 16 volt, 4.7 microfarads and 25 volt, 1 microfarad. And these are, of course, for the PWM5 solar charge controller. This is the gumstick version where I actually used through hole tantalums. These are for the Femto redesign which is coming soon um, and yes these are surface mount tantalums. So the Femto is a redesign of this on an incredibly tiny board. All surface mount, all the through hole components are gone. Um, I managed to get it down to 1.1 inches by half an inch. It's coming soon. I really want to show it off. It was hard work laying it out. Um, these, I believe, have a footprint of, well, they're called 3216, but that doesn't seem to really tie up with something like 1206 resistors. So I'm just wondering whether 3216 means uh, 3.2 millimeters by 1.6 millimeters. We could have a look at one of these referenced against one of these one centimeter squares, I guess. Um, so there she is there. Let's zoom in on that. It's pretty small, but I think you can see that um, that's sort of five millimeters. So it does look about 3.2. 
and it is about a two to one uh, ratio. Let's see what value that one is. That one is virtually unreadable, but it's 105. So that's uh, one microfarad, isn't it? Because it's one and that zero and five more zeros. So it's a one with six zeros, one million picofarads, is it? Yeah, one microfarad. And uh, on the underside, it looks like that. So yeah, I'm thinking that must be 3.2 millimeters by 1.6 millimeters. I hope that's what it is. And uh, the other one is a 475. So 4.7 microfarads. And then there's some code on there, which I presume relates to the voltage rating, but it's not directly readable. Now, who's the chap who keeps saying, don't use tantalum, use electrolytic? Sorry, mate, I've gone and used tantalum again. And so to eBay, um, 100 pieces. Oh, they do call them 1206. 1206 SMD tantalum capacitor, 16 volts, 4.7 microfarads, 475, 10% tolerance. And then they use this 3216. A type, um, $3.48 for 100 pieces, free shipping. And these came from Shengming Electronics. Start recording. And the other one is 100 pieces. Again, 1206, 25 volt, one microfarad, 105 E, A, 3216. I'm going to have to calculate and see if 3216 is the same as 1206. Um, A type, surface mount device, tantalum capacitor, $4.24 for these one microfarad ones, higher voltage. Uh, again, free shipping from Shengming Electronics. Let's get the calculator out. Um, right, so 1206 is kind of like uh, 0.12 for inches multiplied by 25.4 is, well, it's three millimeters, but not the 3.2, it's not 3216, but it is around three millimeters and that's what we measured it on this grid. So is that 3216 a metric thing? I don't know. Right, let's open this one next because it feels nice. It's uh, clearly something in a plastic tube. Ah, yes, what are these? They are dip switches. Ah, very handily, they've put a little plug in there so I can get a couple, no not a couple, one, a couple if I press that with a knife. Yeah, get a couple of these out. And they're just an alternative style, uh, dual in line, eight way, single pole, single throw switch. Um, a different style from the one I have been using on my computer. So yes, on the computer up to now, I've been using these uh, red and blue switches and I can't find them in any other colors. So I thought, uh, for another part of the computer, I might use these black ones. They are uh, much skinnier, and I'm hoping that, unlike these, which seem to go from sort of really stiff operation to so... <laughs> what word should I use? I can't say flaccid, can I? Well, I could, I, I suppose. So sort of loose that um, they sort of wobble around and stop making a good contact. I'm hoping that these will perhaps be a little higher quality. Could be a forlorn hope. But, you know, if nothing else, um, it's another colour so that I can colour code parts of this uh, computer's data and address and clock and all those sorts of things. And yes, so these are 10 pieces black, 2.54 millimetre pitch. That's a tenth of an inch. 8-bit, uh, 8 positions, way, slide type, dip switch, J24. Um, $4.35, and I got these with free shipping from the GC supermarket. Now, GC stands for, in fact, here it says G and C. It stands for the good and cheap supermarket. So can something be both good and cheap? Well, we shall see. Right, let's do another one. It says electronic parts. That's good because I love electronic parts. Um, this came in today, I think. So let's unravel that. Oh, lovely. Seven segment displays. Again, for the 8-bit computer, because I found um, a chip which will decode four bits of binary 
therefore a hexadecimal number into a hexadecimal digit. So it actually shows A, B, C, D, E and F on two of these displays. Now I think I've got this wrong because I think that uh, after a bit of checking these are common anode. Uh, let's see if I can, oh there we are, yeah we can get them to light up just using a pretty much dead coin cell. Um, let's see if I can actually jot down what the connections are. Right, so I found, uh, now of course this is negative, the short side. I found um, that I can light it up like that. I've got a feeling that the center pin is the power pin. So let's bend that down a little bit. So that one is the only one making contact. Uh, is that doing anything? This is going to be a bit tricky. Right, I've had to get a bit more scientific about this. <laughs> I've got um, a power supply and some resistors. So this is DP, the decimal point. Uh, the next one is, oh, now how are these numbered? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I believe it is. So A, B, C, so if that's C, then that's C. Uh, the middle one, I believe, is the common. That one is A, B, C, uh, D is that, so that's, uh, no, this is D, and this one over on the left hand side is A, B, C, D, E, if that is indeed E, well it is on my diagram. Yeah, so I think this is common anode, and what that means is that uh, you've got a common line here, all the anodes are connected to that common line, and you've only got one connection to all the anodes, but you have individual connections to the cathode. So if I put positive on there, current will flow through the diode, a resistor down to negative, and I have individual access to the individual segments, but the anodes are all common. And I don't want common anode, I want common cathode. Right, yeah, so this is why I'd like this. Common anode is the center pin at the top, it's also the center pin at the bottom, and then that leaves you eight other connections, and they are the various segments, including the decimal point as per this diagram. And so this device is, or these are 10 pieces, 0.56 inch, so slightly over half an inch, seven segment uh, red LED display, one digit, common anode. And I need common cathode. What an idiot. Um, $1.37 for 10 pieces, that's not bad, is it? Free shipping from Alice Womano, 1983. Uh, should we do one more uh, just because it has this nice bit of string on it if I can get that off uh, yes let's do that oh what's this say that's a bit of a giveaway uh, 25g times 20 red plastic what is this oh oh yes little um, lure lock tips which can be screwed onto the end of a solder paste tube to dispense solder paste through a very tiny little uh, aperture. So where's my solder paste experimentation tub? Well, here it is. And oh, there's all sorts of things in here like syringes and uh, this, which was uh, the final sort of um, working thing. And I think the idea was to put a syringe uh, on there because interestingly, this lure lock system also has a nozzle which seems to mate perfectly with this uh, piece of tubing and then yeah you just press down on here that puts air pressure in here um, I actually put silica gel in here which was a bad idea because I think it's um, adsorbed all of the solvent from the solder paste now possibly it didn't possibly it did I think silica gel um, absorbs adsorbs I should say uh, both water and other chemicals so yes, I think the chemical may have leached into there. It would have had to get past that barrier, of course, but this seems to have gone pretty hard. I bought some more of these. Um, so the nozzles are the bit that goes on the end. I wanted to uh, produce a very fine sliver of solder paste, and this does the job. Now, someone suggested to me um, that I use a syringe, just a big syringe, to just apply some pressure that amount of pressure of course it's distributed throughout the tube but it also ends up in this chamber here um, i use the silica gel to try and 
reduce the uh, the air volume in this chamber. Silica gel was a bad idea. I've bought some little two millimeter beads. They'll be coming soon to replace the silica gel. Um, the solder paste, yes, it's temperature sensitive. It kind of flows better when it's warmer. It is very warm at the moment, but of course it dries out as well. These seemed to be about the right tip diameter to produce, to produce the very fine slivers of solder paste which I wanted to dispense. So yes, I will be returning to this uh, soon. And you might be able to see on this board, uh, let's go into macro. Yes, I think you can see there how well, oh, they've all got a bit smudged on that one, but yeah, how well I was able to lay down um, tiny little traces of solder paste and you need very little this is the trick very little solder paste um, drop the chip down onto it and heat the whole thing up and uh, yes so I will be returning to this as soon as I wish to put my um, oh now EIA J oversized chips onto these uh, JEDEC sized boards so these are 20 times glue syringe tips, various gauge. Ah, this is the red gauge. Um, for solder paste adhesive lure lock, that's the threading locking mechanism. Plastic, now what gauges are they offering? Well, in here there's only 14 gauge, which is green, and 25 gauge, which is red. And I'm pretty sure this is 25 gauge, the higher number meaning the smaller hole. Yeah, 25 gauge red. So 20 pieces, $3.99, free shipping. And these came from Beerist. And so these are today's post bag items. Now, once again, a massive thanks to uh, Patreon supporters. It's you guys that kind of make this whole thing work. So if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, then click this link here. Um, big thanks also, of course, to JLC PCB, who are sponsoring uh, my videos. Uh, if you want to watch more of my stuff, there are another couple of videos up here. And if you're not subscribed to my channel and you'd like to be subscribed, then click this link here. Cheerio.